Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and once again with my guest, Dr. Sharif Amir, Professor of International Relations. Dr. Sharif, to start with, uh, President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi has always been stressing the importance of Egyptian-African relations and also uh, stressing the importance of joint cooperation with African countries and support, uh, supporting joint efforts to achieve the aspirations of the African continent. How do you read this? Well, um Egypt's role in Africa uh, was um, historically something very prestigious to all African countries as we helped many countries in Africa to gain independence. And then Egypt uh, went through some turmoil during what was called the Arab Spring and then we found out afterwards that uh, there was some problems integrating Egypt into the African Union in 2013. And then when the 30th of June revolution took place in 2013, President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, after, after, was, after the, the democratic elections and he assumed power, he started negotiating with every African leader yes. so that Egypt regains its position as a leading country in Africa. Yes. But President Sisi adopted a new policy mm -hmm. that was never adopted before. It was the policy of brotherhood mm -hmm. that every country in Africa is, uh, 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 has a sharing um, a culture, sharing tradition with Egypt and that this will keep Egypt on the leading position. Mm -hmm. That's why President Sisi always said about the African people, the African nations, said our brothers in Africa. And let's not forget that it was very quick that Egypt, from being outside the African Union, became the head of African Union. Yes. And then all the projects started at that time. Mm -hmm. How do you view Egypt's efforts in achieving peace and security in Africa? Well, Africa, uh, as we know, unfortunately, uh, was always uh, the let's say the the the, uh, the fertile land for uh, wars, tribal wars, civil wars, and all these and revolutions and and all these political problems, which mm -hmm. pushed the young people from Africa into the immigration. Yes. So uh, we have seen, unfortunately the boats who sank during the, 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 uh, the boats trying to transfer the illegal immigrants to Europe and African nations were in despair. At that time, President Sisi started working with every country mm -hmm. about how to stop the wars, how to bring security, and how to make the young people feel confident mm -hmm. in Africa that they could contribute in the building of their own countries. That's yes. why we have started in Egypt uh, the conferences for the youth, yes. African youth. And we started, uh, President Sisi started talking to them and telling them, no one will build your country except you, yes. the young people. Sure. So, uh, right. uh, that's, that's, what, uh, that's what I wanted to say, that Egypt had this leading role mm -hmm. in trying to make them understand that we could achieve stability. Yes. Well, uh, in light of uh, seven years of working hard on the African file, now how do you view President Sisi's efforts to restore Africa's role in Europe also and activate its status and uh, consolidate stability and development internally and internationally? Well, uh, we, ha we know that uh, Europe um, at a certain time was hit by what was called illegal immigration, especially after the downfall of the regime of Gaddafi in Libya. Mm -hmm. and, and at the same time, there was the Syrian refugees coming from, uh, from, uh, from the civil war in Syria. Yes. So uh, every, uh, all the refugees were flooding into the old continent. Mm -hmm. And we know at that time that Erdogan played this card of blackmailing his neighbors in, 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 uh, in Europe yes. about uh, financing terrorism, financing all the illegal immigration into Europe. Mm -hmm. So I think that Egypt was the only partner 
mm. who was worse for us uh, was the Europeans to tell them you should help Africa to regain its stability so you would not suffer anymore from the illegal immigration. Mm -hmm. And President Sisi was present in every summit about the, and there was for the first time African European summits mm -hmm. in, in, in Palermo, in, uh, in Vienna, and President Sisi was the leading uh, figure there because he was negotiating the case of Africa. Mm -hmm. If Europe needs to have stability and be sure that their borders are safe, they have to ensure that what's taking place elsewhere uh, the south of the Mediterranean should be safe. And that what, what was the problem in Libya. Mm -hmm. And President Sisi at that time started speaking with all his counterparts mm -hmm. in, in, in Europe, especially in Italy, because there was, the border was so close with them about the case in, it, in, in Libya, that yes. you have to help the, the, the national army of Libya to defend itself so that we can bring stability and the illegal immigration should be stopped. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, now, Dr. Sharif, in your opinion, what gives Egypt extensive political influence in Africa? Well, our historical role um, through history, uh, Egypt is the leading country in, in the, all the independence uh, uh, movements in Africa. Um, we helped uh, uh, countries like Algeria, like uh, the Congo, um, Sudan. We helped every country to, to gain its independence. But also, let's not forget the geographic position of Egypt we are the bridge between Africa and Asia through the Sinai Peninsula. Uh, and we have the Suez Canal, which is a tremendous um, route uh, for the cooperation between all nations. Mm. And of course, through history, Egypt was the hub of the cultures uh, from Greece, from uh, Italy, during the first parts of the uh, first years of uh, the 20th century, mm -hmm. all these communities were living in Egypt. Uh, so there is something special about Egypt. And also, let's not forget that our civilization is a pride for all the Africans, the, Af the, the, uh, the, the pharaohs. Uh, so there is something about this country and also it has, this country has the leaders like uh, at the, the independence time was uh, Nasser and, and then we have now President Sisi bringing hope to all the African nations again. Yes, and now moving on to Somalia and uh, focusing on Somalia, there was a very important visit by Somali Prime Minister to Egypt this week, mm. a three-day visit, uh, talking about the Egyptian-Somali relations and uh, how do you view Egypt's strategy to engage further with the African states and especially those in the east of the continent? Well, the Horn of Africa is very uh, strategic for Egypt and unfortunately, when Egypt uh, abandoned the, the file of, of Africa uh, decades ago, we paid a very he heavy price afterwards in negotiations with, uh, uh, with Addis Ababa about the, the, the Renaissance uh, uh, barrage. And then uh, there was chaos and the civil war in, in, in Somalia. Mm. Somalia is very important for us because it has uh, it, it, it's the victim of terrorism until now with Al Shabab, mm -hmm. and we do not wish to see any uh, terrorist groups on any African soil because we have seen what took place in Libya. Uh, secondly, so the second point is that there are countries who are trying to harm this country, especially, and to control it uh, so that it will be a, uh, a base to harm Egypt's influence in the Red Sea, mm -hmm. and I mean by that Turkey. It has mm -hmm. a military base there, and it has no explanation why Turkey has a military base inside of Somalia. Mm -hmm. uh, it never helped the, Soma the Somali people in, in any ways. So I think that now the, the Prime Minister of Somalia, he understands Egypt's weight. Mm -hmm. He understands now that Egypt could contribute in peace mm -hmm. in this region. 
uh, for instance, uh, we have built many projects in, in Tanzania, in, uh, in South Sudan, and we are helping uh, the neighboring country of Somalia, we are happy, uh, helping uh, Djibouti. Mm -hmm. President Sisi made a visit there. Yes. Uh, so I think that these African um, leaders, they understand now that there is a leader who can help them mm -hmm. and not harm them by uh, blackmailing them with any uh, uh, help. Uh, we offer the help, the project as humanitarian and friendly relationship with mm -hmm. these countries. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Dr. Shif, uh, would Egypt face intense competition from regional rivals as it tries to gain a foothold in Somalia? Of course, because Somalia, as I said, there is a, a terrorist group there, the Al Shabaab there, and it's financed by, um, well, <laughs> we know that, uh, that uh, uh, Ankara, that uh, Turkey is present there, and their military base were, was never hit by the terrorist group. Mm -hmm. So that explains many things. Yes. So I think that um, there are countries who wish to cut the road uh, of uh, the Red Sea for Egypt. As we know, for example, that at Bab el uh, numerous times the Iranians tried to block it so that the Suez Canal would be blocked. Same thing, we have the same uh, obstacle in in, uh, in Somalia. They're trying to harm Egypt's uh, position there. But let's not forget that our role now is to bring the peace and stability in these countries, not to compete with these countries in wars. Mm -hmm. For instance, what took place in Libya when, when the mercenaries were sent from Turkey Everyone saw that Egypt, when, when, when President Sisi drew the red line, that we will have a military intervention. Yes. And we, we, we explained to everyone the red line would be respected, but not with firing one bullet. We know how to do it, and we will do it again in Somalia. Mm -hmm. When we would like to ensure the security there and peace there, we will do it calmly. Mm -hmm. And the people there will understand that they have to follow Egypt, not and someone else. Yes, uh, well, uh, Dr. Sharif, in, in light of uh, what you've just said regarding the Suez Canal, uh, how would the stability uh, in Somalia affect the security of the Suez Canal and uh, the growing role uh, in Africa? Why the Suez Canal, along with the new Suez Canal, are viewed as a present and future nerve center of the African economy? Well. Uh, because we all know that um, Egypt started a new sector of the Suez Canal. That, that uh, at that time, many countries saw that this sector would not work, uh, but uh, fortunately for us, it worked and, and we're trying to invest in it. So it would be a double route. It would facilitate uh, the, 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 the traffic. And we all know that there are numerous projects now, uh, whether in, in Turkey uh, or in Iran even, to have some uh, alternative routes. Mm -hmm. But I think it won't work because the safest and the shortest is Egypt's uh, Suez Canal route. Mm -hmm. um, we all know that uh, the countries having a uh, port sea, in, uh, whether it's Somalia, Eritrea, Djibouti, and Sudan also, and South, uh, mm -hmm. they are trying, our, our enemies are trying to have a presence there. Yes. So there will be some, um, let's say this route won't be safe anymore. Yes. And we, all, we remember that at a certain time there was the Somali pirates phenomena, mm -hmm. and all the ships were attacked. And I think that now we are explaining to everyone Egypt is guaranteeing the security of this vital route. We will never ever abandon this security. And we have a superb navy. We have uh, uh, the, our, our uh, arsenal prepared to defend all the, the maritime routes, whether in, in, in the Mediterranean or in the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. And this is how re uh, regional powers defend their interests. Yes. Right. Well, uh, for Egypt, the Horn of Africa is a national security concern. Now, especially vis-a-vis -vis the Red Sea uh, and the fact that it's also close to the Nile Basin. Uh, these have always been two strategic areas uh, 
for of importance to Egypt. Uh, how how do you see uh, the uh, the importance of uh, um, Egypt's keenness on drawing many of the Horn of Africa nations, like uh, for example um, Somalia, Kenya, and Djibouti, to its orbit? Mm. Well. Um when President Sisi visited Djibouti, uh, many regional countries uh, were stunned because Djibouti is a military base for several countries and regional powers, mm -hmm. such as uh, or international powers, such as China, France, the United mm -hmm. States, even Turkey is trying to have a, a footstep there. Uh, I think that President Sisi, when he made this visit, he made it clear that Egypt is part of the equation mm -hmm. and we would not uh, leave this part of Africa for our uh, rivals. We are trying also to make it clear to, to the Horn of Africa that you need cooperation with Egypt so you would rebuild again mm -hmm. the security because unfortunately this part was uh, devastated by wars mm -hmm. and terrorism. and. Well, let's not forget that uh, Somalia is, is a bordering country to um, Ethiopia. So uh, the message is clear also that we are present there to ensure our security in everywhere in Africa. We have our presence everywhere, whether in Djibouti, whether in Somalia. And in Eritrea, we have relations with them also. Yes, sure. Well, uh, dear viewers, uh, uh, we'll go to a short break and we'll be back to resume the daily debate uh, with our guest, Dr. Sharif Amir, Professor of International Relations. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. You're still watching the daily debate live on Nile TV International and still with my guest, Dr. Sharif Amir political analyst and professor of international relations. Now, Dr. Sharif, talking about uh, the uh, civil war in uh, some of the African countries and the efforts exerted by Egypt uh, towards uh, some countries like Libya, Tunisia, and South Sudan uh, in stabilizing in st uh, and stability in these countries. Well, uh, we all know Egypt's role in uh, calming the situation in Libya. Mm -hmm. um, we have seen how many countries contributed in the destruction of this country. Mm -hmm. And the aim was also that a um, terrorist group will infiltrate the borders into Egypt and destabilize Egypt's security. Yes. And President Sisi understood from the first day that it's very critical the situation there mm. and someone of some countries are trying to push Egypt into a confrontation inside Libya yes. or to face terrorism inside Egypt and the equation was very difficult so we were prepared with our sophisticated um, equipment because the land there is very difficult to maintain the long border with Libya. Mm -hmm. We were prepared how to stop the vehicles uh, or coming, um, carrying the terrorists into Egypt. We stopped them. And then we, we understood how they wanted to push Egypt into confrontation there. So uh, at that time, we started talking with our partners in Europe that we have to rebuild the National Army of Libya. Yes. Was the head of Marshal Khalifa Haftar. Mm -hmm. And Khalifa Haftar at that time was not accepted inside Europe for many reasons. We had started explaining uh, to them that you have to deal with this man because Libya has to fight terrorism. Mm -hmm. And no one will fight terrorism. We would not go into the land of Libya because we respect the sovereignty of the country there. Yes. And fortunately, the army of Libya was created. We were present as guiding them how to combat terrorism as we have the experience. We never interfered in, uh, in land. And um, our partners in Europe understood that to fight terrorism, to fight illegal immigration, they have to stop uh, accepting the finance of these groups, whether from, at that time, Qatar and Turkey. Mm -hmm. Till Turkey 
bluntly, like a, in front of everyone, sent the mercenaries yes. and started uh, engaging the war again so that they will have a presence there. Mm. But Egypt has, uh, has this policy of negotiating with everyone. We negotiated with all the factions. Mm -hmm. And uh, now we have the, the prime minister there, Mr. Debeba. Um, we are trying to make him um, also negotiate with Khalifa Haftar. So there will be a harmony between the government and the army at that, uh, in, in this country. It's very complicated, but I think we have, we have managed to ensure more than 90% of the mission because our partners in Europe understand now that the situation in Libya should be calm. Uh, the Libyan people, they appreciate a lot the role of President Sisi and how we, are, we ensured the, the security again in this country. Well, mm. it's not 100% secure, but still they're now better than before. Mm. And then uh, when we drew the red line and we said that we would not accept it, it was respected and it showed that how Egypt had a trilateral force, I mean by that our military, our diplomacy and our intelligence service. Mm -hmm. Moving to countries like, um, like Tunisia, yes. as you said. Mm -hmm. Tunisia, uh, we all know it was the starting point of the what was called the Arab Spring, spring yes. in 20, uh, 2011. 2011. Yes. Well, I think that Tunisia was heading towards a disaster. Even with the COVID-19 was spreading, the army was uh, unable to control the situation, and President Qais Sa Ibn Said Qais was... Said, yes, was yes. He, wanted to, he wants to serve his country, but he didn't know how to do it because at a certain time, uh, he was, the partnership with the, uh, the Muslim Brotherhood there was influencing many things. Mm -hmm. And I think when President Sisi spoke with uh, his uh, Tunisian uh, counterpart about the situation in, in his country, that we would like to help, we give advice, we, didn't, we never um, enforce our vision we just keep negotiating. Yes. And I think that at a certain moment, he got the info that the, the powers inside the country were destroying the country. I mean by that, uh, the husband Nahda, the, 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 the Nahda party at that time was mm. destroying the country. Mm. And he took the bold actions to defend his country. Yes. And now he is ensuring this. And I think that I call always Tunisia as the laboratory of all these movements because it's a small country and they, they just study how the people will, ref, will react. And I think that we showed everyone that uh, the say is for the people and for the national uh, front, not for the terrorist and the extremist front. Yes. We have also countries like Sudan, as you said. South Sudan. And South Sudan, Sudan. Yeah. South Sudan we all know that since 2011 when they gained the independence it was devastated by civil war yes. and the civil war never gave them an, the opportunity to work to build their country mm -hmm. president sisi was the first foreign leader to make a visit there mm -hmm. as uh, he made the visit to rwanda and uh, and burundi and to djibouti he, he had the, these bold steps to go there and to talk with the people there and we starting making Silva care and, and his uh, uh, um, um, vice president to negotiate yes. and to put aside the tribal differences mm -hmm. so the country could go forward. And they signed a peace agreement thanks to Egypt's interference or Egypt's, I mean, Egypt's uh, mediation. Mm -hmm. This kind of mediation saved a lot of, uh, um, saved a lot for th this country. Yes. And then we started investing in there. We have built a huge medical center mm -hmm. in Juba. And I think that the people now understand that war is not the solution mm -hmm. and, they, and they understand that Egypt is giving them the chance to 
create a new opportunity as an independent country. Mm -hmm. And then there was a revolution in Sudan mm -hmm. against al-Bashir. Mm -hmm. And I think at that time, many rivals to Egypt started pushing some factions against Egypt mm. uh, because everyone saw that Egypt will support the army against everyone. And mm. President Sisi at that time, he said, all the factions are welcome in Egypt to come and to negotiate and talk, mm -hmm. as we did with the Libyans also. When they came to Egypt, they started having true discussions, and now we have a government there was, which is created by all the political factions. Mm -hmm. No one is being forgotten. And that means that Egypt also made a mediation without siding with any one. We mm. gave them the opportunity to choose and to talk, and we gave them the, the advice because Fortunately, when we went through all these turmoils um, in the last years uh, before uh, President Sisi became uh, elected, uh, we, we went through the experience of political turmoil. And mm -hmm. now we're giving the experience, as we're giving the experience in fighting terrorism. Yes. Well, uh, moving on to the uh, Renaissance Dam. Now, the United States, the African Union, and the UN Security Council have been involved in attempts to convince Ethiopia to sign a legally binding agreement uh, to deal with the uh, filling and operation of the dam. Mm. Now, uh, how do you view the fact that Egypt is now trying also to get uh, Ethiopia's prime allies like uh, China or including China to put pressure on Addis Ababa to sign uh, this deal? Well, um, first of all, our policy is that we have no problem with the people of Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. We do not, and we were, we were never and we ever will be against their economic development. And yes. President Sisi said it numerous times. He went even there and he said it to the mm. people there. We are not against the economic development of Ethiopia. Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. And we are not against the construction of this dam. Mm -hmm. All what we are saying is that they have to abide to the international agreements yes. and to negotiate with Egypt so that we would not be harmed. Mm -hmm. So I think that our partners in the international community, mm -hmm. especially Russia and China, mm -hmm. they understand now that Egypt wants to help Ethiopia, but we would like to also to make them understand and make the government there understand yes. that there are regional accords that should be respected and not put aside. Mm. And I think that we gave the message very clear yes. to Addis Ababa that we have contacted, first of all, the country itself, mm. then the neighboring country, then the African Union, then the, then the partners, then the international community, then the UN. We are not uh, we are we are not wasting any effort. We are trying to work in all diplomatic ways to make them understand that they have to abide into this agreement. They have to sign the treaty with Egypt and Sudan. They have to understand that we would not accept that the, uh, our share of water would be harmed. And I, I, uh, I, I trust President Sisi when he said it will never happen that our share of water will be harmed. Yes. Right. Uh, on another level now, President Sisi tasked the government to complete the construction of the Julius Nyerere uh, Dam and hydropower station in Tanzania mm. uh, to the highest quality, of course. And uh, now, uh, what does Egypt gain from building a dam in Tanzania? Well, first of all, we are giving the message uh, to all these countries that we are a leading country. Mm -hmm. and that we are uh, prepared to work with the African nations for development. Mm -hmm. And answering your question, of course, it will help us because, first of all, the, uh, it's an investment for the Egyptian companies, the entrepreneurs there, to work. And Egyptian uh, 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 engineers will go and work there. Mm -hmm. um, and also, 
let's not forget that when you help these countries, you have also some benefits from the agriculture, for example, if we need some uh, agricultural products from them, we will get it in a good price. Mm -hmm. So the exchange is very important. And we are working according to the, sp uh, the spirit of brotherhood in this continent. Mm -hmm. And Egypt is, is also is, um, is telling them, is telling all the countries in, in, in Africa, you're always dependent on Europe. Mm. and the Europeans to come and help you. Why not working with, with your brothers inside of Africa? Mm -hmm. This will help you a lot. This will give you more and more um, confidence in your power to work and, and build uh, Africa. Mm -hmm. And as we know that now the old continent, I mean Europe, is, is the borders are closed and immigration is not uh, accepted anymore as it was before. So there is no other way except working on the soil of Africa and building these countries. Yes. Uh, now moving on to uh, another related uh, topic, Sierra Leone. Uh, Minister, uh, Foreign Minister Sameh Shokri received uh, in Cairo Tuesday his uh, Sierra Leonean uh, counterpart, David Francis. Now, uh, how important is this visit and how would the, uh, the cooperation with uh, other countries like Sierra Leone uh, and uh, the Sahel and Sahara region in particular benefit Egypt and the whole continent in general? Well, uh, we all know that Sierra Leone went uh, through a devastating long civil war and this country could have been one of the richest countries because it has the diamond, it has the oil and the world wars there were present and working for other factions and other powers. I think once again, as I'm, I was saying, Egypt is, uh, is now a country giving them confidence that if you need to rebuild the country, if you need projects, if you need uh, to even political mediation, you can count on Cairo. And President Sisi, uh, when he was at the head of the African Union, never forgot these countries. Mm. We didn't uh, focus on Libya, uh, Sudan, Nigeria, the big countries of uh, the, the, uh, the heavyweight countries mm. uh, of, uh, of Africa. No, we were also very uh, um, um, worried that countries like Sierra Leone, uh, or Guinea, Equatorial Guinea, we, we, uh, we would be affected uh, by disease, by civil war, by political turmoil, mm -hmm. because we all know that from experience, the country that we will abandon in Africa, immediately it will be a hub for terrorist groups, and then terrorist groups spread everywhere, mm -hmm. as it happened in Boko Haram, in Shabab, in, mm -hmm. uh, in Somalia, and in Libya. So we do not wish to see that happening again. Mm -hmm. well, Sierra Leone is far from Egypt, but we, we do not wish to see this happening again, Al-Qaeda in Mali. Mm -hmm. So we have to work now that to ensure all the borders all, of all these countries, these are bordering countries for, mm -hmm. for us. Mm -hmm. And let's see, now Egypt has influence from north of Africa to east of Africa to the west of Africa, to the south of Africa. We are present everywhere. Never, never we were present like that before. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, still in light with what you've uh, just mentioned concerning combating uh, terrorism, uh, President Sisi has been always calling for the importance of uh, fighting terrorism as it is the one of main, the main challenges uh, mm. that is hindering development in the African continent. Now, would you be, please brief us on Egypt's efforts in eliminating uh, continental uh, terrorism? Well, we all know that Egypt has the experience. We have uh, offered a lot uh, from our martyrs, from the police, from the army, and um, the people also. And I think that uh, the problem that took place in, in Libya was huge. Mm. Uh, we were facing uh, real terrorist groups from all kinds of, of nationalities there. Mm -hmm and they had huge financing.
Yes. And uh, we had to fight and repel this, uh, these groups. So I think that once we were the head and the head of the African Union, we had, as I said, Al Shabab in Somalia, Boko Haram, uh, Al Qaeda in in uh, in Mali. So I think at that time we started giving them the experience, the experience and the expertise that we had, because one of the main problems in Africa at that time it was the intelligence info, because this war is not only about fighting with arms is fighting also the intelligence. Mm -hmm. And the second part also, as President Sisi always said, the, the religious mindset. So we started sending um, uh, um, uh, clergy from the Al-Azhar, giving these countries the, the, ability, the possibility to see not the extremist view, mm -hmm. but the moderate view of religion and to understand that uh, being religious doesn't mean you have to carry arms. Mm -hmm. So I think that, that Egypt had in, in a huge task mm -hmm. of the security and intelligence apparatus and also the intelligence uh, and the religious um, uh, mindset that we had to form again for the African youth. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, uh, another very important country to talk about is the Democratic Republic of the Congo and the uh, mutual relations, bilateral relations between Egypt and Congo. In your opinion, how would strengthening relations between the two countries uh, would help in achieving security and stability in Africa? Well, um, Congo was always um, the focus of many uh, European countries because it's a rich country in agriculture and it's, it's, it has a huge landscape there. Mm. I think that uh, when Egypt is present there, we have, uh, first of all, historical role uh, in the 1960s of the last century when we had this country to gain independence from Belgium. So I think that we are giving also them a new, uh, a new message that Egypt is coming back to help to uh, emphasize the cooperation because mm -hmm. Africa, uh, as I said, everything is open and whenever it, something is harmful happening in the country, it could harm. Egypt also. Mm -hmm. Right, and finally, uh, Dr. Sharif, how would you view the future of uh, Egyptian-African relations? Well, uh, it has many obstacles, but it it's, uh, was Egypt's tenacity working with our brothers there and with the same spirit. It will be very bright future. President Sisi uh, is a leading figure in whole Africa, and I think Africa is being blessed that this man is now working with them with, with no uh, other background but nothing but brotherhood and cooperation. Right, well, uh, I would like to thank you very much, Dr. Thank Sharif you. Amir, our political analyst and professor of international relations. Always a pleasure having you with us. Thank you. Uh, dear viewers, that brings us to the end of this edition of the Daily Debate. Many thanks for watching. This is Nidin Ramzi signing off.